Hey y'all, I have a podcast, While We Wait, the podcast before the marriage, available everywhere that you find podcasts, and this is my most recent episode. I wanted to share it here on YouTube to just let you guys know I do a lot of things outside of YouTube, and I will be coming back and uploading a lot more vlogs very soon. I just need to edit them. So in the meantime, please enjoy this episode of While We Wait, the podcast before the marriage. Hey babes, I hope you're drinking water. Welcome back. We're in another episode. I know, I know, I know. It's a lot to take in right now, but it's really exciting and you feel really good about it. Oh my God, babe, save me too. So we're back with another episode. I haven't seen y'all since January, but it's February and we're here. I'm very excited to be here today because I am choosing to remain consistent. I was just speaking aloud to myself, (laughs) processing my thoughts, because I was getting ready to record this and I was just saying, girl, why do you not have a mic? Why do you not have a mic? You are how many episodes in? Okay. This is clearly something that you want to do. It's really on your spirit. You keep revisiting it. You keep returning it. You keep building upon it because I need to. (laughs) I need to. And so I just need to get a mic. And I can't, I know why I don't have a mic. I don't have a mic because I kept telling myself, oh no, I need to be way more consistent with the podcast and the podcast needs to be structured this way, that way, this way. And then I had to sit down with myself and ask myself, what is the purpose of this? All of this. For me. And then when I asked myself that, I said, well, that's not really the question. The question is, what is the purpose of all of this for all of us? All of us. Because once I say what I'm saying and then I put that out there, okay, I take it from pen to paper. I take it from notes app. I take it from Google Docs, whatever. And I verbalize that and put that out there to be heard by others, processed by others, um, used by others. I want to make sure that I'm always being intentional about what it is that I'm saying, no matter what it is that I'm speaking on. And I really want to be saying something because I truly feel that I have something to say, not just for the sake of really anything else (laughs) like I'm coming to share when sharing feels necessary and that is all (laughs) so wanted to also make that known (laughs) for myself I wanted to verbalize that but I also wanted to put that out there and verbalize that for all of you as well Because I know that I was looking for that language for myself, so somebody else is too. I hope you hear me. (laughs) Hey, when you do. Um, But okay, we're back. Welcome back. Today's episode is a little different, a little different. Um, I won't be directly speaking about abstinence. Um, I'll... mm, I have notes. I have notes. And there are things that I could also mention about abstinence in in this as well. But anyway, just making it known that's not the main point. Um, today, I want to talk about Black women and the spaces that we create for ourselves. Well, the spaces that we say we want to create for ourselves um, and what we're really doing in those spaces and how we can protect those spaces, but really uplift those spaces, you know, deeply, deeply support those spaces, but also protect those spaces and um, not lose, not lose the understanding that what, what I'm really doing, if this is your purpose, right? So if this is, something you've been feeling in your spirit. Okay, and this aligns. (laughs) But you get what I'm saying. If you've been feeling like this too, uh, I think you should think about this 
We should all think about this, actually. Um, you know, if your purpose is really, if you're saying to yourself, okay, to genocide, no matter what it is that I'm like doing here, right, on this plane, on earth, in this realm, this dimension, what have you, whatever your language is, okay? But whatever my purpose is here, like what I what I know to be true deep down inside of me, what I know I'm like at the the base of it all or whatever, um, I really want to create communities for Black women that are very protective of Black women, that are very supportive of Black women, that are um, willing and able to really really support ourselves um, to truly have a community where you really know that, you know, the next woman will help you. She just will because you are a Black woman, you know? Like, and I am a Black woman too. And I really want us to get to that place where we say that with so much love. We have such a um, deep respect for that. We understand how enlightening that relationship is. We understand how important that relationship is. We understand how loving um, that relationship is how really like amazing and safe and um fun you know that relationship is we really have to honor okay we have to really honor we have to really honor our shared experience as women and as black women if you are a black woman, you identify as a black woman, you know, there's a shared experience, y'all. And we can always make a shift in our life experience. We can, together, <laughs> as a group, as a collective, can really... um create a huge shift in our life experience because we have decided that we just will not stand for some things, um, that we will show up for each other and defend and support and love one another when we need that. You know, really rally behind each other. And I'm not saying that we don't. I'm just saying that sometimes when we do um, create those spaces, right, we we have it going, right? Because, there, you know, like there are communities, there are absolutely communities of Black women, or, or rather there are absolutely Black women in community who are like not wavering. You know what I mean? Like they are not wavering. They're not on what they have decided will be their experience in life. We're like it just will be, you know? Because there has been a long, 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 right? Like long standing shared experience that we have been having as black women. Oh, just in this world. Um and I I just know and I just really feel deeply that. The more that we are in community with each other, the more that we are having conversations with each other, that we are really open to receiving 
from one another and being really open to giving <laughs> to one another, but also just having our own like agreed upon respect <laughs> with one another. You know, um, a lot is going on in the world that really can make it so we don't want to uh, always be kind to one another, you know, for whatever reason. And everyone obviously does not get influenced by that. You know, everyone doesn't see certain advertisement or watch certain shows and then becomes, you know what I'm saying? unkind or anything, but I definitely feel that when black women are creating spaces for ourselves and we're saying, okay, we're going to, we're going to carve out this area, right? And we're going to decide that this is where we're going to go, right? This is where we're going to gather. And this is what we're going to do to make sure that we are really taking care of ourselves, honoring ourselves, respecting ourselves, loving ourselves, you know, being kind to ourselves and allowing ourselves to be who we are and embrace it every day. You know, you've decided in this life, okay, even though they try to say your experience is going to have to be this and that, no, it doesn't. (laughs) Like, no, it does not. It doesn't because your, you know, other folks' behavior, beliefs, whatever, like, it. okay, that is for them. That is for them. You don't have to take it in at all. So I feel that when I see, like, we get these spaces and it's like, oh, my God, yes. Like, black women, we have this area where we do this stuff with each other and we're bonding and we're friendshiping, you know, and we're building relationships. We're, commu- we're communicating with each other. If it's a networking type thing, then we're networking with each other. You know, we're doing all the things. And um, mm, it's like... I don't know if everything has to become, or like if it should (laughs) become these very large um, sales things, you know? Um, I'm trying to really find the language of what I would like liken it to. Um... Basically, (laughs) I don't want us to lose the community. I think when we start to lose the community of whatever it is we say we're doing for ourselves, um, that's, that's, that's when we start deviating. And I feel like that's when people start becoming, you know, they lose focus that Like, what, like, wasn't, like, you know, like, wasn't this the black girl, you know, pottery club, you know, whatever, like, I thought we get together on Wednesdays, we do our pottery, we have our discussions, you know, we, we, we fellowship, you know, and that's what we do every Wednesday. That's the, like, you know, that's what it is. Maybe we might do it Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. We was really feeling it that, you know, whatever. And then... The Black Girls Pottery Club, you know, suddenly turns into like the Black Girl Pottery Network. And all along the way, when it, by the time it becomes the Black Girl Pottery Network, unless people were really, really, really making sure they were doing some real good internal work along those steps, what happens is a breakdown of that community. And then something where everyone had mutual understanding and respect and, you know, love and care and empathy for each other becomes, you know, there'd be like beefs. You know what I'm saying? I don't get it. Like, there'd be like beefs or, you know, people, I don't know, people feel like things need to be much larger or people feel like things need to be scaled back or whatever or 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 people go 
uh, with the pottery, why don't we also do, you know, bird viewing and this and that and that. And now it's like five different things. But then the people who really just wanted it to be, you know, the Black Girl Pottery Club, <laughs> you get what I'm saying, are still in it because it is still the Black Girl Pottery Club. But now it's also 5011 things because expansion, you know, and scalability and, you know, all of that. And how sustainable is that? A lot of times we see that happen to to our communities when black women create communities for ourselves, right? Because we need communities, okay? And it also really, really helps us. It's really amazing when we really get in community with each other, you know? Instead of two, let's be four. Instead of four, let's be six. Instead of six, let's be eight. Instead of eight, let's be 90, <laughs> you know? Out of 90, let's be a thousand. Like, let's be in commu really, really, really in community with each other. You know? I'm talking about the second somebody says, Can y'all stream that song? You know what I'm saying? Can y'all like that post? Can y'all donate to the effort? Could y'all just share? You know, whatever. There becomes such a consistent, there becomes such a consistent, I mean, consistent community, right? Like mobilization community that is received, that is being, you know, given, that's being done, that we really um, honor <laughs> the collective shift in our life experience improves, improves. And when we we have to create communities for ourselves very differently than everybody else, okay? Black women have to create community for ourselves very differently, and that's, hey. <laughs> and we have to make sure that we check in with ourselves, especially those of us that, like to not even like to are really are called to um like create communities really be like oh my god you know what i know this person that person this person that person i know these like 18 like dope fire like oh my gosh all of these people really should know each other not just know of each other they should know each other they should be in community with each other. You know, they should be in friendship, kinship. Like, they should be in community with each other. And when you're doing that, when you're bringing all those people together, when you are creating spaces to, with the intention to bring people together to develop deeper community, You, you know what I'm saying? You need so much support yourself, okay? So your personal peer group does not need to be super large. It also does not need to be small. It needs to be what you really need it to be. So really sit with yourself and ask yourself what you truly require of community so that you can have somewhat consistent, you know, like feeling of support. I know people say all the time, like, you need to just, you know, have your high um, self-concept and work on your confidence and do ba do ba do And like, yeah, all of that is true. All that is very true. You do need to have a strong conviction within yourself. You know, you really do need to be 
confident within yourself. You need to trust that the decisions that you were making at the time are in your best interest. You need to really walk in the knowing, not just not just like, oh, like, yeah, I believe that all things are working in my favor. No, you need to know that all things are working in your favor. All things, everything, every, every thing. You really have to know that. So that when you identify, and it's and it really is about when you identify that there is a person or situation in your life, okay, your life experience, but in your life that is just, it's not working, it's out of whack, it's not good. Like, it is whack. It's not, you know it. Like, you know, like, every day, you know, when you have to approach the situation or approach the person or whatever, be around the person or be in or of the situation, you are, oh my gosh, you're like all over the place because it is not good for you. And you know that. And also, you keep feeling like that because, baby, whatever was to be experienced there is good and done. Just look like, leave it alone. <laughs> leave it alone. Bow out gracefully and go, okay. So, you have to do all that. But also, your personal community needs to be strong. If it's just your one best friend, if it's your five best friends, if it's your core group of 20, whatever your dynamics are. But it needs to really be what works for you. Because that is what helps you. That is what really anchors you when things that seem like opportunities um, or even just people come around that see that that community you're creating. They see how precious. <laughs> they see how precious it is and how strong it is and what even just a community of 10, right? 20, 50, 60 can do, have done, right? People see how precious that is. So black women, when you're creating these spaces, you're creating these communities, we have to really, we have to think about letting everybody come inside. We do. We have to think about letting everybody sit at the table. You know, we just have to think about it. Just think about it a little bit before we say, yeah, like everybody. Now it becomes a whole thing. Now we have panels where people who really know nothing of our experience are trying to give us advice about how to better our experience when the advice just uh, doesn't apply. It, it doesn't make sense because the person who is trying to give that advice is not our representative, really doesn't know anything of our experience. And then we are saying we are frustrated with our own spaces. We are saying that we are frustrated with the spaces that we are creating because, because people are now <laughs> in these spaces who, okay, are just here to try to take something from this space. That's it. That's it. That's why they're here. That's why they're here. So before we say everybody can be on the panel about black women, anything, <laughs> let us really take a moment there and think about it because protecting our spaces is so, it's like they already make it a thing. When we create a space for ourselves. 
we have to be so protective of our spaces. We have to be so protective of our spaces. And I know that even having to be like that feels frustrating because it means that things will take a bit longer. Even though things are really happening happening like expeditiously for you, really, when you really think about it. It's like things are really moving once you decide this is what I'm doing. With that being said, <laughs> the process is different. The route is different, okay? The road walked is different, but it is your most perfect one. It is the one that you are supposed to be on, right? This is your path. People have similarities along paths, but everybody has their own specific path, right? But understand that (laughs) if we really want to protect our spaces, honor our spaces, really, really like do these works, these important works of saying, okay, we got, we like, we're really going to support black women, um, every facet and every like place in life that I can or that takes uh, that takes strong conviction but it takes up like you have to really be fierce about it and it has to be protected you know I don't think people realize the reality of when say a, a founder has decided they want to work with 90% or 100% black companies, brands, managers, you know, whatever clubs, restaurant, whatever that is, but they really say, I'm doing it for black people. <laughs> I'm doing it for black people. I'm doing it for black people. Okay? Because I just am. And because it is important. We all know it's important. Period. And honoring that is serious. It's really very serious. You could take, okay, y'all could take Keith Lee as an example. Let's have an example. Let's give, because I've said a lot of things. Okay. I've said a lot of things. So that has to process, even for myself. And then I like examples. So let's do an example. Keith Lee. Keith Lee is someone who I would say is very good at protecting his community, respecting his community, honoring the community that he has created. Because although Keith Lee, what does Keith Lee have? He has like... I'm sure at this point he has a couple hundred million followers on TikTok. And as like, oh my gosh, as that is like, that is so many people. Um, there, there's, there's still what, how many billion, you get what I'm saying? People on this planet. So, you know, relative, but it's still, oh my God, even one million, y'all, 2,000, a 1,000, like, you know, y'all, really, (laughs) really, like, after 100 people, it's like, okay, now, so, so it's really community, it's always been community, two people is community, but we all understand what I'm saying, hundreds of millions is countries size worth of people, continent, like, babe, a lot of people, so, that is a community, though. But he has done, I would say, a really, really good job at protecting his community, defending his community, um, loving, really loving and supporting his community and honoring, right, the many different sub-communities within the larger community. Keith Lee, I would say, has done this really, really well. Because, you know, he, if there's something going on, if there's chitter chattering, Keith Lee will let people know he hears chitter chattering, <laughs> you know? 
And he will also express how he feels about it or what he is, is observing. Okay? If, if something doesn't need to be called out, it is called out. But it is called out and done in such a way with so much love. Like Tabitha Grace. Oh, my goodness. Ah. It's like... If there ever needs to be a call out, right, or like acknowledgement of maybe bad behavior, right, it wasn't the whole super worst thing in the world, but it was like, you shouldn't, you didn't need to speak to that person the way you did, right? It could just be that. But it's done with such grace. They both have their own language, right, and in, in their communication, but they essentially are saying the same thing. It's done in so much grace. They just want you to just... One, not feel however you're feeling that is making you even communicate in that way or behave in the way that you are. Um, and right, they just they just want you to to want that too. That's all. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my god, to really walk in that in a way that honestly, I'm uh, to uh, it's unshaken. <laughs> I just feel like. It is an unshaken way. And it's really beautiful to see demonstrated. Um, really, really wonderful because it means that we are all capable. <laughs> you know, we are all capable, but that takes a lot of protection. And then you see, of course, right, what they, they go through themselves with having cultivated such a community they take it with such responsibility. People also, you know, people, people are a lot. <laughs> I love humans. Humans are, we got our own set of things going on, right? Just like the meerkats do in the wild. So do we. Uh, but we are, we are capable. We are capable. So because we are so capable, black women, <laughs> you know, I we can lean on each other a bit more. I really think we can. I know that, you know, maybe let's say the last two decades, um, you know, the PR for us has, has, has been off amongst ourselves. I'm not talking about all the, of the everything else of it all. I'm just talking about black women to black women and our relationship with each other. Okay. That's just black women. It's been a little, it's been a little off. It's been a little odd. It's been a little off. Um, but I feel that we're all kind of in this space of like, uh, like, uh, like we're seeing how we're having our community taken from us or we're just seeing how our spaces, there were, there were some really awesome, right? I mean, like incredible spaces and collectives, to use that language, and communities that are just, you know, like slipping by or passing by, slipping through. And it's like, no, 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 right? Like, how do we, um, how do we beef this up? How do we keep this energy and spirit up and going? And how do we continue this? Because, oh my God, you mean to tell me, we did all of that together, like just ourselves, you know, with our support and love for one another. Oh, we can really do some things now. Like, okay, let's really do something. Um, The United Order of Tents. If you're not familiar with the United Order, I'm like, girl, hard pivot. I know. The United Order of Tents is a society for black women. And I would say, look into it for research purposes. Understand what I'm saying here. The United Order of Tents. Just read up on it. <laughs> read up on it. And you do from there. You do from there. Um, That is... An example 
And as you read, okay, as you drink some water and you read and you take notes, you will, you know, you will really be able to decide for yourself <laughs> how we do this, how we can do this, right? And what that looks like, making sure that we don't lose our community. Okay, girly paps, I love all of us, okay? But I need us to all love all of us a lot more so everybody just not up at our table with our resources and then looking at us like, excuse me, why are you trying to access your resources? And it's like, what you mean? That's exact because they're my resources. They're all of our resources. You know, what's going on here? <laughs> what's happening? You know, I don't, mm -mm. we just got to think a bit more. You know what I'm saying? Think a bit more about our communities and just, just how precious they are. How, how, how powerful they are. For, like, for real. I mean, y'all, come on, like. Issa Rae. Issa Rae should not have been on a stage. Oh my goodness. <laughs> With her name being mispronounced so egregiously. Again. What do they want the seat for anyway? Why our table? Mm hmm. At this time, why our table? And then can't even really tell us why. Don't even really know why themselves. So, okay, so they say. They just want to take things. And then, again, we're saying we're frustrated by our own communities because Something is happening now, right, in the community that's like, if it was see now, if it was us, would, would that have been going on? Would that nonsense, would that foolishness have been going on up on that stage? No. No. Or after a correction, it would have stopped. Okay. But didn't. That's what I'm saying. We That's happening, like, way too much now. It's happening... Way too much now. Okay, so maybe we can get into the like specifics of it all. Not really, but like these are just things that I have been like seeing in we could say our community spaces. Um not even really specific to black women. Actually, I would say I don't I don't want to say can I say what? <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. Not really specific to black women because I, I want to say this. I don't, I, myself, I haven't seen it like only being, what am I trying to say? Okay. I haven't seen it only happening with like black women owned anything or founded anything. But again, remember, I'm not, I'm not talking about like businesses in a broad scope. I'm talking about a very like specific, <laughs> a very specific thing. And that is people who create communities that's what they like do they re they have really honed in on that skill of connecting people and re and like being very specific about the people who are getting connected who are getting connected to the people who are getting connected who are people to the people getting connected so on and so forth to really create a community because that community, right, is is really gonna make a a shift, um, a shift in life experience, which will <laughs> like have an impact on all, right, within a radius and radius and radius and so on and so forth, and I don't see that happening too much with I would say black women who are 
creating the spaces. It, but I'm not going to sit here and say it doesn't happen at all. It absolutely does. <laughs> it absolutely does. But, right, you can take um, CultureCon, for example. And CultureCon is such an exciting thing to see grow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You know, from then to now, as they say. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. I mean, CultureCon is really... They're getting to it now. You know what I'm saying? They've always been. They've always been. And you can see that, right? You can see that in the way that they have been growing and expanding and scaling. With that to be said, because so much respect for that team. With that being said, Easter Ray was on that stage. <laughs> and her name continued to be mispronounced egregiously because who was interviewing her you know it's just like what but again it's because now we are partnered with whomever okay and a requirement of that is that Issa Rae might have to be up on that stage and have her name mispronounced egregiously and when we really sit and start thinking about that, because it's like, y'all, it's way too many. It's way too many. Why does this, why is it like every single time, you know, there's a partnership with so-and-so or whoever, whoever, okay, company brand. Now things like this are like happening in the community. Now we're starting to get frustrated. Now we're starting to, oh... Don't like this. Don't like that. Right? We have to start, oh my goodness, really figuring out how we are going to put some structure behind all this, this whole thing. Um, and then reparations, they say, are on the way. Right? So what's the structure, y'all, so we can really... Keep it going. Keep it going, okay? But really being comfortable um, and safe and loved, you know, and honored and respected, we have to protect our communities. And we have to, when we start seeing stuff going on in the community, we have to also, again, be so fiercely protective that when we speak up and go, hey, hey, I'm noticing some things, right, happening in the community that are not so awesome, you know, is not so great, does not feel good, you know, is ooh, is not really that cool, you know, we have to be like, okay, please <laughs> tell it, let us know what Let's address that. We have to be a little more open to that. I think a lot of times people go, hey, I'm, I'm noticing this thing for real. And we go like, girl, what? Mm, uh. Take lip gloss. Oh, my gosh. Lip gloss was so great, y'all.